Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here. Welcome to another Sundance Recap. We're going to talk about some of the movies that I'm seeing at the Sundance Film Festival. Starting with Kajillionaire, directed by Miranda July. This movie has like kind of a quirky, offbeat style. The characters are very character-y, but it doesn't feel like forced. This movie was extremely engaging to me. I loved the direction, the crafting of the characters I really liked. I had no idea where this movie was going, and it went in new directions that I was just like on board with. It was really funny, especially the first half. The film follows a mother, father, and daughter who are very poor and basically live to just scheme. Along their scheming, they meet Gina Rodriguez's character. I didn't even know she was gonna be in this movie. I saw her and I was like, oh wow, Gina Rodriguez, what an interesting cameo and then she becomes like a giant character. Richard Jenkins as the father is really funny. Gina Rodriguez was really good too. Evan Rachel Wood's performance comes to really dominate the film in a ways that you don't necessarily expect. It has moments where it hints at being something more profound. There's a really interesting, like unique sequence. You'll know it when you see it that like I was pretty floored by. My only issue is that it's basically like a really odd person discovering truths about life that most of the audience already knows. So in that way, I felt like it was a little too obvious. But this was definitely one of the most enjoyable movies of the fest. As far as Miranda July's style goes, I was really into it and I want to watch her other films now. So I will give this movie an 8 out of 10. Next, I saw Save Yourselves with an exclamation point. It stars John Reynolds and Sunita Mani, and it's directed by Eleanor Wilson and Alex Huston Fisher. The first half of this movie is so funny and original, and it feels like it has a really modern comedic style, and one that we don't really see much. Like, it sort of has an indie sense of humor, but it's also like laugh out loud funny like any mainstream comedy is. This is thanks to super clever, sharp, pinpoint detail writing, and the two lead actors have such great chemistry, full of personality. It's a combination of the characters sometimes know that they're being funny, but the script is always like a little funnier than they are, even when they know it. I could watch these two all day, just like banter. They're so amusing and funny. I laughed out loud a lot in this movie. Like the first half of this movie, I was convinced that this is one of the best comedies in years. I was super on board with it. I was loving it every second. It was just a fast paced, Joy. The movie has a sort of sci-fi alien concept that it starts teasing its way into the movie. These two characters are a couple and they decide to go on a no technology retreat. Is it for an ego boost? Is it because they genuinely want to connect with nature? Like you can decide that. And while they're away, they don't realize because they don't have access to the internet that the world is essentially being overtaken by aliens. Don't expect a big city alien battle in this movie. They're mostly done with practical effects. But I have to say, the second half of this movie really just kind of dipped down and it never came back up and that really disappointed me. Like I said, I could watch these characters all day. The alien thing, it was like interesting to see how it was being teased and I was wondering where the movie's gonna go with that. But once it got there, it became, you know, so focused on the survival aspect and the aliens that it lost what the first half had without the alien. I don't know if it needed the aliens actually because they didn't add that much to the story. If they found more fun ways to like do it or found more ways to inject the laughs of the first half into that, I would have loved it, but it seems like they struggled with it. And the end felt like really unsatisfying. I'm gonna just have to go with a seven out of 10, but I still like really strongly would recommend that you see it. You might not feel like it loses steam in the second half like I do, and it's worth watching for the great moments and the original comedy that you get here. And finally, I saw Relic, an Australian horror film that is about a woman who needs to take care of her senile grandmother and does so with the help of her granddaughter. They kind of move in and like start assisting. But you know, obviously this is a horror movie so it's kind of a creepy grandma and her senileness leads to her like talking to herself or seeing things. So at first it might seem like the scary grandma trope and sure it borrows from that, but you will not think that like as the movie goes on, the fears expressed in the movie are aimed at anxieties of aging and dealing with taking care of your decaying parents. I didn't know how I was gonna ultimately end up feeling about this film. The first half like didn't do anything that like really excited me. It had some 
chilling moments, but it really was the second half that took off for me. The surreal elements that happened in the second half, I'm not gonna say like what it is. That was like really cool and claustrophobic and it captured a lot of like anxieties that manifested forward into the rest of the movie. And I gotta say, like, the ending of this movie absolutely, like, struck a chord with me. You can throw around the words disturbing or shaking you to your core. There isn't a horror movie that actually has disturbed me and rattled me like this movie did. It was the best ending of a horror movie I've ever seen. I'm not using hyperbole. I've thought about it and it's, like, definitely true. I didn't know I was gonna feel this way about the movie. It emotionally disturbed me. I had to like take a breather after this movie ended. And it makes me want to watch it again, just to see if the first half does like more to hint at what I liked about it in the second half and I just didn't notice it. I can't say that this is like the most consistently good movie, at least on this first watch, but the second half was great and then the end was like mind blowing. This is like one of the most impressive movies I've seen at the festival so far and it happens to be a horror movie. I don't want to get your expectations like so high where you expect a lot from the ending. I don't want you to expect anything because I want you to unexpectedly be hit by it. I'm gonna give Relic a nine out of 10. I really loved it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. When are you gonna save yourself?